Hello, my name is Lena Kronenberger. I'm a freelance journalist and moderator, and I'm part of New Europeans since 2016. Today, I have the opportunity to talk to Mrs. Monika Pakowiak, a Polish district judge and a member of Justitia, the biggest judges association in Poland. Welcome, Monika Pakowiak, and thank you for being here. It's a normal for me, so thank you. <laughs> I understand that you're currently facing disciplinary proceedings in Poland because of clashes between EU law and Polish law. I'm hoping to hear more about it today, but first I'd like to hear a bit more about yourself and the reason why you wanted to become a judge in the first place. So uh, I am from Poznań, which is uh, in the western part of Poland. Uh, I became judge uh, well, actually, I decided to be a judge uh, in the end of my studies. First, I didn't like law <laughs> at all, and I, I didn't find comfortable uh, studying law because um, the, that was the time when uh, there was incredible competition in Poland and everything was so fast, everybody was so focused on, you know, on money, on career, because that was the time when we, we had that incredible uh, time of um, new democracy, new opportunities and everything. So I remember that most of my colleagues at the university they were focused on, uh, on a career and, and it was a dream for them to uh, to be a lawyer in one of these big legal companies and I didn't like it at all. Uh, but uh, just it was coincidence that I took part in, um, in workshops uh, uh, dedicated to human rights and um, where I met um, some judges who, uh, who worked, who adjud adjudicated in former Yugoslavia and because that was just after the war in, in former Yugoslavia and I thought okay so I guess it's for me <laughs> and uh, then I was very focused on, on uh, um, getting into this uh, um, in, into the school for, uh, for judges and I well and I succeeded so uh, it all began when I, I, I began uh, mm, being a judge, it, was, it wasn't full judge, but uh, I, I began to adjudicate in 2004. And then in 2007, I was uh, appointed, nominated by President of Polish Republic, Lech Kaczyński, um, to be um, a full judge. So that's how it happened. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, from your perspective, could you maybe introduce us to the political climate in Poland today, especially in regard to its effect on the legal system? Mm -hmm. uh, so I focus mainly on judiciary and all those illegal issues. Uh, uh, I don't feel comfortable to make comments about political situation, but it's, uh, well, sometimes it's hard to distinguish these two um, areas. So uh, in uh, 2015, when uh, law and justice won the parliamentary elections, the first thing they did was uh, to take control over con the constitutional court. And that was the key to everything was what is happening in Poland now. Because having constitutional court, it means that you can, you can do whatever you want, you can pass every law you wish, and, uh, and it's, um, there is no constitutional control over the, the, the legal acts that, um, that parliament, parliamentary, parliamentary uh, passes. So, and that's how it happened, unfortunately. I mean, judges, the old judges from the Constitutional Court were struggling uh, for as much as it was possible, but it all happened so fast. It was like 
blitzkrieg, you know. So it was, for us, it was kind of a shock because uh, we thought, and all, all of us, uh, especially lawyers, we had this feeling that, okay, there are, you know, uh, it's not that we have perfect system, but at least we have some grounds, we have some fundaments, and uh, we have quite a stable um, checks and balance system, but then it just disappeared within a few months. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think it was so fast that Polish society uh, didn't manage to react properly, and and what's more important, Constitutional Court was an institutional not known for the vast majority of our um, society because it was, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's an institution, of course, it's so important for, for, for lawyers, but for normal people, common people, I don't know if they even realize that we have such institutions. So, that was over. Another thing which, which was done, <clears throat> it was merging the Office of General Prosecutor and uh, Minister of Justice in one person, which is Zbigniew Ziobro. And, uh, and it also was a very speed process that Prosecutor General, Minister of Justice, he took the control over all prosecutors. Uh, what I would like to underline, we still have a group of really independent prosecutors, but uh, with the system we have, it's really, um, unfortunately, it doesn't uh, mean anything because uh, in case any prosecutor decides to, well, make investigation, for example, about um, the thing which is not in favor of uh, ruling majority, then the case is uh, very promptly taken away from that prosecutor and that prosecutor uh, is going to face disciplinary proceedings or even criminal proceedings. That's what is really happening. And uh, what the best might have happened to these prosecu prosecutors is just to degrade them or transfer them from one office to another. We, ha we had several cases where prosecutor was um, transferred from Krakow to Wrocław, which is 300 kilometers. And, uh, and uh, the, the one I'm talking about, Prosecutor Krasan, he was an expert in co commercial offenses. And, uh, and all he did was he just gave interview about uh, these so-called reforms and that was it. He was removed from one place to another. By the way, he won a case uh, in a labor court and the uh, court decided to trans transfer him back to Krakow. But prosecutors didn't, um, um, well, it, it, they didn't care about this. I mean, the prosecutor's office and the prosecutor general. And can you imagine that judges who uh, delivered this decision, they face criminal offenses right now, which is uh, the, the offense is to the abusement of power. That's, that's what is happening right now. So, yeah. Into my detail, how you, how does it feel to to have put your career at risk like that? I mean, what, what are you? Are you angry? Are you are you sad? Uh, I guess we all have, uh, you know, the so many emotions about all of this. I mean, at least me, I'm try to be optimistic, and judges have much higher still higher protection because uh, um, there are a few paragraphs in our constitution about judges. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean that they do not violate it, but still it's not that easy, you know, to, um, to make uh, that harm to judges. The free freezing effect in Poland is incredible, both among uh, prosecutors and judges. Uh, I try to be quite optimistic because I strongly believe that sooner or later we're going to win this battle. 
and I believe in Polish uh, civil society, which is quite strong, although, uh, you know, um, obviously the governing majority won these previous elections, the last elections, but still uh, I have comparison with other European countries such as Bulgaria, Romania, and, uh, and I admire judges there too. Uh, but I think what's, what's this difference, it, it is this civil society, the NGOs, which are very active in Poland. So, so the conclusion is that I really do believe that sooner or later it's going to end. And, um, but people, but the, another feeling that I have is that I am very exhausted and tired because it lasts for more five years and in case of me it's like three years of incredible struggling and you know you you need to work um, as a regular judge and then you have this extra job uh, and you need to face uh, hatred campaign public media talk about you like you are the enemy of the nation and so on so it's uh happen that um, yes. the news is writing about you. So, yes, of business course. daily basis or weekly basis? Uh, you know, uh, I was born in '74, and I really do remember uh, public media we had before '89, and now is much worse. I mean, the propaganda in public media is incredible, and the uh what they do and that's another you know that that's the key to um understanding why uh we have the situation in poland and why this populist ideas and terrible ideas about i don't know lgbt of course uh, also why is it uh, possible to happen in the middle of Europe because of mainly because of media, because of public media, it's incredible. And they just don't care about facts and they invent stories. And it's, uh, it's really so vulgar uh, uh, propaganda and they lose one case after another in courts, but they don't care because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, it's the program, <laughs> you know, how to support the governing um, majority. So uh, of course it's uh, and, and another story we had like last year that it was revealed that deputy minister of justice stood behind the uh, smear campaign against judges and it was just nightmare. He was dismissed, but now he enjoys really good, uh, having a really good job. Uh, and he, he, what's the worst? The worst thing is that he is a judge. Uh, so the whole propaganda system is not only, the, the, these are not only public media, but also um, the government, obviously. So it's all linked together. That's how it is. What is the most terrible thing that was written about you? Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, well, last November there was uh, on the main in information uh, program, it was like at 7.30 p.m. So this that people uh, watch the most. Uh, I think the fourth fourth information was about me, but I'm probably um, have a Twitter account on which I am, uh, you know, defaming uh, decent judges <laughs> from the so-called judges for me from the Supreme Court and uh, and so on, which is of course not true. And and you know, it's a uh, the problem is in that in some areas of Poland, especially in eastern part of Poland, uh, the public media is, these are the only public which are accessible. And I live in the very small village, close to Poznań, but still it's very sm small village. And I believe that some of my neighbors also watch public media. And, you know, it's, uh, of course, I kn I'm fully aware that it's nonsense and, uh, and uh, what I'm doing right, but it's really difficult to, to defend yourself in such situation because uh, uh, usually how 
that's how the human brain works. Okay, if they talk about you, there must be something behind it. And so, so, so that's the, 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 the key point. And another thing is that uh, we have some evidences for that, that uh, people from the Ministry of Justice, they cooperate with uh, owners of Twitter accounts, which are anonymous. And this is like, you know, it's so vulgar. And so I could see my pictures with, I don't know, um, uh, which in, in, in which I was uh, compared to like witches, which is quite funny for me. <laughs> but and um, and very vulgar words, and so so yeah. that's how it is. Yeah, you just said that it's hard to defend yourself, but you, um, yeah, you make a stand against the Polish authorities, right? I mean, could you maybe describe how you do it, or what are the actions you're taking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I even knowing what happened uh, to me and what 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 ha what is happening to my colleagues, because obviously, of course, it's not only me. Uh, I would do the same thing. I mean, it's so important to speak out. You know, my parents were members of Solidarity, so they they were risking much more than I do now, still, and it would be just waste of the of what we did before. Uh, so the, the, uh, we all are doing, I mean all, I mean people who are active, we are doing what we can do, which is speaking out, giving interviews, organizing uh, uh, social events. Like in 2017, we organized Chains uh, of Light, that's how we called it. That was when the first um, uh, time, I'm not the first time, but a Polish government tried to take over completely over the Supreme Court, the Judicial Council, and the uh, and courts. Uh, in a way, they finally succeeded. But at that time, it was so it was such incredibly harsh law uh, that it was kind of a shock even for uh, for common people. And we managed to um, to. Uh, go out on the streets and there were like thousands of people then um, on the streets. So that's what we did. And then we, uh, we um, also cooperate uh, with Europe and, you know, with European Union, with, with Council of Europe. And uh, we are quite active in international associations of judges. And so, and which lead us to the march of 1000 robes in January this year. And that was just incredible event because judges for the first time in the history, judges from uh, so many countries came to one place and we had this march in gowns. So that was just amazing. And people stood on the street, I mean, regular people, and applauding these judges who came as, to support us uh and it was very special moment so uh we also i mean this is pro probably the most important thing we try to educate people about their rights about uh, rule of law about um, uh, fundamental rights so uh we have uh, um, the uh the, the, the program of educating kids in primary and high schools, it's becoming more and more difficult because uh, of this political, political climate we have in Poland. Some of the directors of schools, they are afraid to, <laughs> to invite us, but still, it is still something. So it's a long-term activity, but uh, I think it's the most important thing just to educate people about the right and educate ourselves because we need the education also. Um, and the good thing about all of this, what is happening in Poland is that people realize, some of our colleagues, some judges, 
that we need to change our language because uh, what we usually say in, in the courtroom is not understandable <laughs> to common people and then they are, you know, confused. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's another thing. But, so when you go into primary schools and you talk to little children, um, little kids, so what are you telling them? What is the language you're using then? Well, we organize uh, mm, uh, hearings and uh, so, so these are hearings about like based on fairy tales or on the Star Wars. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, so there are kids who are defenders and there are kids who are, uh, uh, who are prosecutors, for, for example, which is one kid who is a judge. So, on the basis of on, on, on these stories, we show them um, how important uh, rights are. So of course we don't, you know, we don't tell them, but we need parliament or we need uh, the constitutional court because it's um, <laughs> it's uh, it's um, these are two big words and which mean nothing for them. But at least we try to show how it is important that you have rights and you can fight for it. So mm -hmm. that's how we do it. We do it. Yeah, that's really nice. Do you see maybe similarities uh, to other European countries when you think of the situation you are in? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. And uh, well, I'm um, also uh, active in MEDAL, which is the Association of Judges and Prosecutors uh, uh, from many European countries. And it's uh, so easy to see that uh, mainly Bulgaria and also Romania, they are looking at us and they are still, you know, waiting what is happening here uh, because uh, especially in Bulgaria, what they are doing there with, with judges and with judicial system is also not a good thing. And it's, uh, uh, unfortunately, they uh, learn one from each other. And the first one who started all of this was uh, Viktor Orban and, uh, and Hungary. Um, uh, so uh, I think that's why Polish case is so important, not because we are so important, but uh, we are qu quite large country and uh, and we have quite uh, active civil society and if we manage to uh, defend rule of law then it's very optimistic for the whole European Union but if we fail then it's gonna be a disaster I think because we are one Le European Union is based on, you know, mutual trust. It's it's based on law and it's based on on values. So, if one of this brick is taken out, then the whole structure can just fall apart. So, so that's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. And maybe let's talk about a call to action. Um, in your opinion, what do you think the EU institutions can do to help? Uh, uh, from our experience, the Article 7 procedure, procedure is not uh, effective at all because it's very political and uh, you need um, um, all countries to agree on this, which is not possible. Uh, so, as far as we can, you know, see, the only tool which is very effective, really effective, is this uh, infringement procedure, which might be launched by European Commission, and that would happen in case of the uh, um, of Prime Forest, that was like four years ago, and then um, um, regarding the Supreme Court judges retirement age and now uh, we have um, pending two I think uh, because there are so many of them unfortunately <laughs> two infringement procedures and in one of them the Court of Justice the European Court of Justice suspended the activity of the disciplinary chamber of the Supreme Court and it's very crucial 
although uh, they don't fully <clears throat> follow this verdict, but still it is very important. Uh, so this is this is um, uh, this is the most effective way to achieve something. Of course, uh, we have so many debates in our in, in European Parliament. Uh, and you can see when you watch this d disputes <clears throat> in your par parliament, what argument have uh, the representatives of Polish government of the of the parties, and it's always very um, I feel so you know ashamed watching this. But you can then get a clue and idea how how that does it look like in our country, and uh, I think the uh, the, the this combination of um, rule of law and budget idea is also might be quite effective in the future mm -hmm. so that's what uh, what uh, we can do and of course the most important institution in 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 all this structure is the european court of justice uh, because it has you know it's not political and it's uh, the verdicts are uh, based on law, and uh, that's why uh, so many judges initiated um, proceedings, and uh, and in which um, some courts and mainly the Supreme Court, uh, Polish Supreme Court, the the old one, um, they raised preliminary questions to the European Court of Justice and like yesterday I had a hearing in my case in Luxembourg uh, concerning um, the independence of uh, judiciary and uh, we will see what's going to happen so th this is and it's not only uh, it's important not only for Poland but what we constantly repeat it's so important for the whole uh, judicial systems in the whole European Union yeah, so you're saying that like Poland and what's happening right now has consequences for all of us. For yes, all of course. People. I mean, of course. And uh, the point is that we all need to remember that it's not only this Easter countries uh, issue, but you can see when you watch what is happening in Italy, in Spain, for example, in, in this old democracies, at least older than Poland. But uh, there are some, you know, um, politicians always try to um, take more and more control over the judiciary because it's very convenient for them. And what uh, Mr. Salvini says, for example, when I listen to him is like, uh, the same things that I can hear here in Poland and uh, and even in France. So uh, it's it's crucial for all of us. I, I am I am totally sure about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said earlier that it's tiring because I mean you're fighting now for a couple of years yeah. already. So what is it that you I mean when you wake up in the morning why are you still motivated to make a stand against the Polish authorities? Because I, I strongly believe that uh, we are on the, <laughs> on the right side. And as I said before, it's, uh, uh, I remember 89 and it was so incredible. I was 13 then, so I was really, you know, uh, uh, rational and adult enough to understand the change with made, and my parents were always very involved and 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 um, and it's so, so I really do remember very well how it is uh, not to have uh, freedom and uh, that the comfort we have because it's you know when we compare our situation to other countries from uh, this uh, financial point of view, it's so not that bad, you know, it's uh, we are quite a developed country, but it's really nothing when you don't have freedom, we, you don't have the uh, uh, democracy and we are losing it now. So I am, uh, I have really no doubt uh, to stand for these values uh, each day. Although, as I said, it's, 
it's sometimes tiring and like la last uh, holidays <clears throat> i went to we went with my family to italy for three weeks and i uh, just cut off you know everything the internet and because i just was so tired and it's it's really it's not only tiring because of judicial issues but what is happening in poland regarding lgbt is just killing me really and it's um so disappointed about so many people and uh, it's really painful so i mean you're personally disappointed by people's opinions yeah friends opinions or family members Call, I mean, family now because uh, I'm the lucky one whose you know whole family is really both on both my husband's and my my uh, side is uh, we are quite uh, united, which is quite rare, unfortunately, in Poland right now. But yeah, some of my colleagues and you know in general, uh, I didn't expect that it's so easy to uh, to awake these demons. In, in 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 people's souls so 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 it's really it's really sad i believe that uh, as i said we're gonna um prevail the values values but uh, but but yeah it's 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 so sad mm. and could you maybe um yeah explain the situation when you are talking to a colleague for instance and you really have different opinions um are you saying something out loud or is it rather like you know where you stand and you're just leaving it like that uh the problem is that you know the majority the vast majority of my colleagues they are against this what is happening in poland so at least that's good but there are some judges and these are usually people who somehow they don't feel um, very secure about their position and they uh, they thought that they uh, deserved more in the in the past and that you know uh, they didn't succeed enough and so so mainly the people my colleagues who support um, this so-called reference but as i said it's a really small group of judges uh it's really hard to talk to them actually and um because and that's another such story uh it's uh on our side we still have disputes i mean on the liberal side we, because we disagree at some point but when somebody supports this uh, you know governing majority then it is just almost impossible to have any discussion because uh, uh, some gr group of people some people are very fanatic about uh, what is happening in Poland and some of them they know that it's really bad but they're so cynical and it's just about you know because uh, about korea and uh, money <laughs> finally that um, it's also useless so that's the sad story but that's how it is so that, oh, actually it's uh, i don't have so many opportunities to have um, disputes with my colleagues who support government and we just simply don't talk to each other mm -hmm. and when they find yeah imagine they will see this video so what do you think would they talk to you about it or i don't know <laughs> well i think i don't i really doubt that they are going to watch us but maybe maybe disciplinary officers the problem is that they probably don't know english enough <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, uh they know my opinion very well and mm -hmm. so i never uh when i am convinced about something i do not make uh you know uh, compromises and uh, but when i talk to somebody so i hide one some things which i think about no 
I, 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 I talk about openly. So they know, know my, they know my position and uh, I uh, gave lots of interviews and uh, about um, what my colleagues are doing actually right now. So uh, maybe that's my hope, but <laughs> it's very, very little. Uh, some of them are going to wake up one day. Do you wish for something what like I as a Euro European could do? Is there something, I don't know, how we could support you and other judges in Poland? I think what is so crucial is just to give information about this, what is happening in Poland and just to uh, enlighten people in other countries that it's not Polish issue actually, because it's the whole European Union and the whole Europe's uh, issue. And so it's not about us, about judges, about our position in Poland, but it's uh, something what is important for every citizen. And, uh, and when we uh, had meetings with some NGOs uh, from Western people, and these people were very, uh, from Western Europe, these people were very well informed about in general, but Still, when we talked to them and we described the judicial situation uh, in Poland, it was like they had no idea, really. So still, you, you need to inform people and, uh, and also for many of us, I mean, for all of us, uh, the words of support are very important because then we see that it's, uh, it's for something mm -hmm. and that we are not invisible here, but it's, uh, uh, it's important for the whole, whole Europe. Yeah, you're not invisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Kowalbiak, for your time and also for sharing your experiences. Thank you so much for, for this opportunity to share uh, our experiences here. Thanks.